Alisson is immense. My model finds he's been worth 0.56 goals every game to Liverpool if versus if they had an average Premier League goalkeeper. Not only is his 1v1 stopping off the chart, he's performing above the expected level for an average Premier League goalkeeper in every single aspect of goalkeeping. Um, so we'll bring up the actual graphic that you, you provided on that tweet. Um, yeah. And you sent over to me via email. And, and I'll let you go through this then, if you wouldn't mind. No, sure. So, yeah, the top line of this is that my model finds Alisson's been worth to Liverpool about 15 goals, so 15.17 goals this season. So that's in just, I think, I think he's played 27 games because um, mm. Kelleher played the other two. Um, so that's like an incredible, yeah, almost like half a goal every game he's worth to, to Liverpool versus if you just put, I don't know, an average Premier League keeper, Alex McCarthy or something, I don't know, just in between the sticks for them. Is so, he average? Yeah. Who? Alex McCarthy? Yeah. I don't know. I just picked him out. I think. I think <laughs> roughly. I think roughly. I was trying to think. Yeah, someone not too bad, not too good. Just you could have just said the hair, mate. It would have been fine. You're, <laughs> you're amongst you're amongst Liverpool yeah. fans here. If you put the hair in, it'd be very weird, though, right? Because as we're about to get to, he's really skewed because he's yeah. like the best in certain things, but actually the worst in other things, which is like makes a really weird profile and quite hard to imagine how it would affect a team. Like I'd always think it'd be a fun experiment if someone could put De Gea or in Liverpool or um, or in Man City and just see what would happen. Like would they and try and make Liverpool play exactly the same style? It'd be a kind of fun sort of experiment of how transferable these statistics are between teams. But mm -hmm. but yeah. Um, so the, the, the top one is, so in terms of shot stopping, uh, he saved him about 8.9, so 8.87 goals above average. And if you break that down, he's not actually faced a penalty this season. So his, okay. his penalty stopping is just zero because he's not faced one, hasn't conceded one. So it, it doesn't know if he's going to be do above or below average at that. Um, his general shot stopping, he saved them 1.91 XG, which sort of means to me, and I think this is apparent to most people who watch Alisson, like he's above average general shot stopping, but it's not really like a crazy, crazy strong strength of his. So he's not always shots from the edge of the box in the bottom corner, tipping those around the post or whatever. Um, he's generally, he'll he'll make a few big saves, but he's not going to consistently be pulling them out of the top top corners for for the, like a general shot stopping um, way. But what he is amazing at is this 1v1 stopping. So yeah. um, this is like and the that highest... passes the eyeball test as well, to be yeah. honest with you, yeah. which I think is massively important from a fan perspective, is that... I don't know whether he's got... I think he's got techniques. You'll know this better than me, John, but he seems to wait until the player has just touched the ball to make his move. And I've I never played in goal or anything. But that, that to me, says he... He's, he's, he's seen what the player is doing. Like, he, maybe you just knock it on two yards, but you're also that furthest point away from being able to kick the ball again. Like, he always seems to time it perfectly with when they're not on the ball anymore is when he makes his move. I don't know whether that's something you've seen yeah. in your analysis. No, no, exactly. Alisson's really, really good at, one, n sort of knowing when he needs to wait on his line and when he needs to rush out, um, and two, sort of timing it all perfectly. So often... You'll see a lot of goalkeepers, they'll rush out, but they won't have stopped yet. So the shot gets hit and they're still moving. So they haven't formed their sort of premeditated barrier. You'll see Alisson a lot. He does this sort of spread smother thing where he puts his legs well, to one yeah. side and like makes his chest big, arms out to the side. And just like the save against Odegaard, actually, he'll put his legs across, arms out to the side, and he'll just be like, I'm so close to you that no matter where you put this in the goal, it's probably just going to hit my arm, hit my forearm, hit my chest and just bounce away. So he doesn't really try and ever react to the shot. His decision is, am I staying on my line and trying to react? So I stay on my line and just treat it like a normal shot. Or am I just going to rush out and make myself huge and sort of, in inverted commas, I always say this, hope it hits me. It's not really hoping because mm -hmm. he's made the decision to get as close as possible and try and basically be like, there's no gaps here. It's just going to have to hit my knee, my thigh, my foot, my hand, whatever it may be. Um, and yeah, like you said, Alison's really good at reading. Okay, they've taken that touch. That means I've got the split second to take three or four steps forward and just make myself big. And then by the time they take that next touch, they'll be shooting and hopefully I've snuffed out the whole of the goal mouth area. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so Alison's basically saved Liverpool seven goals above average at 1v1s. And for comparison, I think the next highest performer in my model is something like, I think it's Jose Sarr on like plus five. But then after that, it's a load of keepers on like plus two and three. Okay. So like yeah the, the the difference between him and the next best 1v1 stopping goalkeepers is like huge um and interesting we'll, we'll get it when we go to my 1v1 graphics but Allison's pretty rare 
in the fact he's above average at both long range 1v1s and close range ones. So he's really good at holding deep and waiting and not panicking and rushing out. But he's also really good at not panicking, I guess, but rushing out and smothering the ball when he has to. Does that come back to decision making then, John? Is that because he's deciding rather than he's being proactive rather than reactive in those situations? Exactly. I've made the decision to stay here. I know what I now need to do, or I've made the decision yeah. to go. Do you think that's what helps him there? Yeah, yeah. It's definitely being cool and calm in his mind, and also just backing his decision wherever he's going. Um, we'll, we'll compare him when we get to the 1v1s with like both Edison and De Gea because Edison and De Gea are both very, very good at certain types of 1v1s and very, very bad at other types. And okay. Alisson manages to be, he's not quite as good as De Gea at long range 1v1s and he's not quite as good at Edison at close range. But when you combine all 1v1s, he's miles better than both of them because he's got the temperament to sort of, yeah, react to the situation and change his decision. Um, yeah, we can, we can get onto that in a bit. But yeah, I guess the, the bottom line is that overall Alisson's basically saved Liverpool nine goals through his shot stopping above average, mainly driven by his just immense record against 1v1s this season. Okay. So goals prevented then, John? Um, yeah. Let's go through this, please. Yeah, so now this is interesting. So the goals prevented isn't quite as high as, as shot stopping, but that's because a quick sort of overview of my model, I've sort of found that Shot stopping is the most important thing in goalkeeping. Who'd have thought? <laughs> Everyone probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, th that is the thing that can sort of swing the amount of value in goals a guy is to the team the most. Then the next highest is sort of goal preventing, and then the lowest is distribution. So in rough percentage terms, um, it, it's sort of like 60% is shot stopping, about 30% is pr goal preventing, and like 10% is distribution. So like, yes, you want a good shot stopper, but as we'll get to when we get onto De Gea, if you've got a top 1%, whatever, 99th percentile shot stopper, if they're the bottom of both distribution and preventing, they'll actually end up being not great overall. So it's one of those things. It's, yes, shot stopping is the most important, but actually you, it, that doesn't mean you can just be really bad at the others. It means that if you've got a good shot stopper and average preventer and distributor, that's better than a really good distributor who's average at shot stopping and preventing. It doesn't mean that you can be really bad at some things. So, um, yeah, in terms of this goals prevented statistic, yeah. Allison saved them about 5.33 goals this year because mm -hmm. of how proactive he is. About so 2.96 of those come from cross claiming. So he's basically because of how active he is claiming crosses, um, he's basically saved Liverpool an extra three goals. So if he'd have just been sort of average goalkeeper and come out when he should, stayed in his line when he should, Liverpool would have probably conceded three additional like headers or tap ins at the back post or whatever, which is which is great. And then there's the through ball sweeping which again is prevented another two goals. So we'll go into this with a nice little graphic highlighting this. But I got a lot of people tweeting me after his mistake against against Tottenham, against Son, where he came out and sweeped and he just swung a leg and missed the ball. Well, I think it hit his standing leg and then Son tapped it in. Lots of people being like, oh, Alisson's gung-ho sweeping is always going to cost him. But actually I found the opposite of that. Like he, he, he prevents so many 1v1s happening that it's actually way net worth making one or two mistakes a season with it. And as you can see at the moment, it's it's been worth plus two goals rather than being any sort a of negative. Any in any way. Negative. Well, yeah. What shot handler then? Is that like when you when you push the ball to the floor and you catch it again? Yeah, so this is exactly that. So it's going to be every shot I look at, as well as having a sort of post shot expected goals value, has also got like a parry value. So you can imagine a, a, like a shot from miles out that goes straight down the middle is going to be sort of caught every time. So it's expected sort of like how often would a rebound be tapped in from this shot? Um, so basically, Allison is on, on this score is plus 0.29 goals. So it basically means his tidy handling has saved Liverpool sort of a third of a goal. Um, and this is one thing that is sort of quite controversial, but my opinion is basically every double save or triple save in football is actually just an initial goalkeeping mistake. There are a few exceptions, but, but most times when people post things of, keepers making double or triple saves, I sort of like, oh, but yeah, they, they, they gave the opposition those shots. So in my model, I wanted something to be like, okay, um, if you do a poor parry, you need to be penalised because, okay, saving the next shot is good and I want that to be a positive in your shot stopping bin, but you have gifted that chance to the opponent. Mm -hmm. Like some shots are going to have high rebound probability, like a header from like that. So the Welbeck save that Alisson made this season has like had a really high like rebound because a lot of the time that doesn't get tipped over the bar that gets pushed straight back out when it does get saved mm -hmm. and now I managed to put it over the bar 
So for example, for him, that would be a really nice contribution to shot handling because corners are only scored 3% of the time in the Premier League. And I think, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it was something like, for that shot, if it was saved, it would provide a rebound of something like 20% chance of going in. So Alisson's turned a 20% chance into a 3% chance just by flicking it out wow. and over the bar. Um, okay. Alisson's also a master of catching things he shouldn't. So I think there's, the, there's obviously that one for Brazil where Messi puts the free kick in the top corner and Alisson just plucks it out of the air and catches it. That's a perfect example of, I imagine, the majority of times that's saved, it's either put out for a corner or pushed back into danger. So it would probably be like 5, 6, 7% chance of a rebound. Alisson catches it, 0% chance of a rebound. So in my model, that would add like 0.07 or whatever to his shot handling. So I think it's a really important thing for yeah to take into account because sometimes there's keepers. And I think Mignolet was a good example of this. Like they'll make a load of double saves. Like you don't see Alisson making double saves because he's, he's catching the first one or just parrying it out of danger. Yeah, and sometimes yeah. people see like a shot in the bottom corner court and they're like, oh, okay, nice save, whatever. And then they would have much rather have preferred him to parry it to a striker, then save the rebound and then be like, oh, what a save that was. And for me, that's like, that's not the case at all. Every time I see a catch, I'm like, good. He's prevented another shot from ever happening. And that needs to be quantified and qualified. Spoken like an ex-goalkeeper, if I do say so myself, mate. <laughs> <laughs> so the total goals distributed then, where, where, where does this come from? Is this yes. just more into in terms of an attacking XG? Yeah, exactly. This is like expected threat. But importantly for goalkeepers, this was one of the cool things I found. So if a goalkeeper receives a back pass in the six yard box, it's actually in the Premier League, on average, more likely to result in a goal against them than a goal for them if they're under pressure. If they're under no pressure, so no one's pressuring them, that's not the case. And uh, I think the numbers off the top of my head were something like eight in a thousand times the keeper has the ball in their box, it'll result in their team scoring more than it will result in the opposition scoring. So it's sort of like a 0.008 um, XG at the start. But then if they're under pressure and in their own six yard box, that sort of shoots up to be like minus 0.03. So like 3% 3% of the time, it's going to be a goal for the opposition rather than a goal for, for your team. So a lot of this, a lot of the goals distributed is sort of, yeah, who's playing those like worldy Allison assists, pinging it 70 yards to a striker's feet, who's suddenly in like a chance to score a goal um, but a lot of it actually for the under pressure is who just doesn't knock it to the opposition <laughs> like who just is tidy on the ball and um and isn't causing any issues there so yeah if we read out the numbers Allison's basically distributed a, a whole goal above average to, mm -hmm. to Liverpool which is fun because obviously he's got one assist so it's, yeah. it's kind yeah, of nice. exactly yeah so it's, um, it's, it's on point isn't it yeah exactly so he's it's, it's 0.97 uh yeah goals above average from from distribution and that's sort of split down into and i think most liverpool fans will probably agree with this that's split down into 0.82 from his general passing when he's not under pressure and plus 0.15 when he is under pressure so that basically means that he's he's really good when he's under no pressure and under pressure he's like above average but not sort of exceptional and i think from from watching us and that sort of rings true like he doesn't he, he's happy receiving it under pressure and playing it around but he's not sort of cutting through teams when he's pressed like Edison normally would do. His sort of best passes and assists, they all sort of come out of his hands when he's under no pressure and he's zinging one. Like you think about the assist against Man United mm -hmm. and the assist he got the, the, the other week. That That's where his distribution's really top level. When he's sort of on the ball, Van Dijk passes it back to him, he gets his head up and he can just clip one out either side. Um, but do, do you see a lot of goalkeepers in your model actually as they're passing under pressure? Does it ever go... Is it ever under zero for for goalkeepers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so this, so this number is is a lot. So, th this is the number like verse average. So that means Allison, when he's under pressure, so far this season has yeah has been a positive one point five. But actually, his number will be higher than that. I think um, mm -hmm. it'll be something like I don't know plus zero point four, and it's just he'd be expected to be. Um, uh, plus 2.5 or something okay. plus 0.25 okay, um, but there, there will definitely be so there'll be lots of goalkeepers that because if you're a negative number on any of these statistics i should probably clarify it just means you're below average at that thing yeah. so this yeah. was the amazing thing about what i tweeted it was that allison is literally above average in every single category um but yeah um there'll be plenty of goalkeepers that also are actually when under pressure and not just negative in terms of versus average but actually negative um in terms of what they're actually doing to their team and you shouldn't really pass back to that goalkeeper because more often than not when a pass back happens it will be more likely to be a goal against you than a, than a goal for you 
So just ignore them. Interesting. Uh, we'll move on then. Uh, he, he continues your tweet uh, of the week, uh, which is a thread. Uh, and it said, lots of the hair talks today. He's an exceptional shot stopper below Premier League level in terms of shot preventing and distributing. Yes, he's been a net positive worth a goal every four games. That largely down to United facing the second most shots in the Premier League. Uh, so I've pulled up... Um, the highest that's in front of us, just so we can compare uh, the two side yep. by side. Now, I'll, I'll quickly whiz through these because on the next slide, I've got the two side by side. But overall value in goals, according to your model, we saw it 10, uh, plus 10 points something, wasn't it, on the FB ref? Uh, the Gea yep. is worth 7.2 goals to Manchester United. Total goals stopped plus 13.02. Uh, in general, stop stopping terms, that's easy for me to say. Uh, 10.45, 1v1, one, one plus 1.18, and penalty stopping plus 1.39 versus the average. Uh, in goals prevented, uh, a minus 4.94. So in cross claiming, minus 3.88. Through ball sweeping, minus 0.96. Shot handling, minus 0.10. And in the category of total goals distributed, minus 0.88. General passing, broken down, that's general passing, minus 0.79. And passing under pressure, minus 0.09. Uh, now on your screens in front of you, if you are watching along rather than listening, we've got the side-by-side -side value so you can compare Allison directly to the hair. So overall value, Allison plus 15.17 to plus 7.2. Total goal stopped. Uh, De Gea is better with plus 13.02 compared to Allison's plus 8.87. And here's where it here's where John what John's saying is Allison is across the board brilliant because his goal swing is actually closer to well it's it's over 10 goals, isn't it, between the two when you look at plus 5.33 minus 4.94 and then there's another two goal swing in the total goals distributed so do you want to just talk about the reasons why and and do you yeah and actually i suppose at this point um is this down to team setup or is this down to goalkeeper or are we getting it all wrong john you mentioned you're the only person in the public domain doing this do yeah. you believe teams are modeling this themselves and is the goalkeeper is Liverpool's high line because it, we've got Alison Becker? What is it the chicken and the egg? Or were we always planning yeah. on playing a high line and it just happens that we're seeing this from Alison, or did we see what Alison can do and play the high line? Yeah, so I think it's it's slightly chicken and egg, but but not that much. Like if you put De Gea in Liverpool, I think he's gonna struggle big time. I think my United really do want to try and play a high line because they did when Henderson came in. Um, it's just it doesn't suit De Gea's skill set, so they have to play deeper. And similarly, Liverpool definitely want to play high line because so when you've got Carrius in instead of Mignolet, like Carrius is a worse shot stopper than Mignolet. Like Mignolet was a decent shot stopper to be fair, but Carrius was far better at sweeping and claiming crosses. His shot prevention and his distribution was better. So Liverpool clearly saw something in Carrius that they, they were like, oh, this is this is what we need if we want to play the way we we want with a really high line, basically camping in their half, and the only attacks they're going to get are going to be on the counter. They tried to get that goalkeeper. They didn't quite get it right with carriers, but you can see from that transfer, they were sort of going towards this valuing goals prevented and goals distributed rather than goals stopped. Um, whereas, yeah, Man United obviously signing the extensions of, to De Gea and stuff, either they don't care about this or they don't think it's that important. Um, because I think anyone who's sort of watched De Gea knows that He's an exceptional shot stopper, but he's, he's he's weak in the other areas. What I guess people don't know is, and I don't think I've seen people doing this because I've been into clubs and I've chatted to them. Um, I don't really think anyone's tried to do what I've done, which is combine the two to see, well, actually, how valuable are they? Because like you say, like my numbers are actually very similar to FB refs in those in the terms of the general shot stopping, like the plus 10 for De Gea and like the plus two for Allison or whatever. Um, but then because they only have those numbers, you might think, oh, wow, De Gea's way better than, than Alisson. But the actual conclusion like we've got on this on this slide is that, yeah, okay, De Gea's a few goals, well, what, basically four goals better than Alisson at shot stopping. Mm -hmm. Fair. But he's, his prevention and distribution is, is is that much worse than an average goalkeeper. Like, it's not even like De Gea's an av just above average. De Gea's like actively one of the lowest in the leagues at these metrics. Good. Um, so that completely cancels it out. You can see he was a plus 13 goals goalkeeper. Well, if you you can imagine that, and that's that that could be like season defining for a team. But actually, he's only net plus seven mm -hmm. because of the deficiencies in other areas. And plus seven's still good. Like I'm not saying they should sack him and bring in Fraser Forster or something. You know what I mean? Like I don't think he's not doing awfully 
for them overall. He's still saving them more than, than an average. But he, he, the question but here then, lead. John, is... Sorry, sorry, mate. Sorry yeah. to interrupt. The, the question here is, if they got an average shot stopper, yeah. above average, but was good at the rest, does it actually benefit the team more if they want to play a high line, if they want to press high up the pitch? Because to press yeah. high up the pitch, you need a high line. You need to cramp that space as much as you possibly can. Is De Gea, although is his brilliance at shot stopping actually holding them back from making the decision of getting rid of him? Yes, everybody, that was a little clip of this week's Stat Show with goalkeeper analyst John Harrison. If you want to see the whole show, one and a half hour long, with all the insights about Ali, our great goalkeeper, our Brazilian hero, head over to redmanplus.com or click the link on the screen and stream all the great content on Redman Plus. Ta-da!